Well, it looks like a lot of people think that self-defense is important. So why the crackdown on it from Britain? To answer that, I'm now joined by Jim Hansen, military blogger for Black5.net. Jim, what do you think about this whole Tim Larkin uh, thing going on? Yeah, I, I, every once in a while, the Brits actually amaze me with their ability to take pacifism and laying down to a whole new level. I mean, the bottom line is I loved some of the comments from the people in that piece about how, you know, you should, oh, you can take Aikido and use these fancy moves to disarm people. You know, it takes a ton of training and skill to disarm or take somebody and put them on the ground without hurting them. It takes very little skill to crack somebody in the skull. So the bottom line is the bad guy is going to crack you in the skull, and if you don't know what to do about that, you're likely to be lying on the sidewalk bleeding, wishing you'd listen to somebody like Tim Larkin. It is really interesting. I, I kind of can't believe it myself. I mean, what do you think the whole purpose is of doing this? I mean, what do you think about the British government excluding him from the country? Do you think there's, it's deeper rooted, or is it just kind of at face value? Well, I think one of those things that people kept saying in that piece again, that you can, if you're in a job that requires this, you should do it. Well, your job as a human being is to stay alive if somebody tries to beat you or hurt you or damage you or kill you. That's a personal responsibility. You know, the police are great people, but when you need help immediately, the police are only minutes away. So if you can't take care of yourself, you're waiting for them to come and draw a chalk outline around your body. If you can take care of yourself, you at least have a chance to survive an incident. And that's what Tim Larkin teaches. So why do you think the government didn't want him there? I mean, what is this teaching the citizenry of Britain saying, like, you know, this is dangerous to even have someone who can teach you self-defense in this country? Uh, the government of Britain is 100 percent convinced that the citizenry should rely on the government of Britain for everything. They are the ultimate nanny state. And this is just one more example of them saying, don't take care of yourselves. We got you. We'll be there to clean up the mess. You know, we'll sh take the fragments of your skull up off the thing and we'll pay your survivors something. But uh, don't take any responsibility for yourself. We got you. And that's a problem. You know, I think human beings have a fundamental right to self-defense. It's probably the most basic one there is. And to say that someone who's teaching you how to keep yourself alive in a bad situation is doing something wrong, that's nonsense. Well, especially since he was going to go teach in these places where there was really heavy rioting, a lot of violence going on. I mean, people obviously want to be taught how to defend themselves, how to defend their businesses. And, you know, this is exactly why he was uh, not allowed in the country. I mean, what, do you, what precedent do you think this sets for other countries, or do you think that this is kind of an isolated case and Britain's kind of gone too far in it. You know, I, I wish it was an isolated case. The problem is we tend to do every silly, you know, nanny state-like thing that the Brits do about three years after they do it. So the bottom line is you can expect someone to be saying that we can't train ourselves here in America to do anything dangerous uh, somewhat down the road. It's, like I said, one of those fundamental things. We have a Second Amendment right. We have things like the Castle Doctrine. We have ways to say that if the bad guys are attacking you, you have a right to do what you need to to stay alive. And to come between that right and any citizen makes the government about as wrong as it can be. And hopefully this will be comical enough, you know, that people look at it and say, I can't believe they did that. But uh, I got a feeling there's plenty of people comfortable with the government taking care of them, sadly. Well, what do you, I mean, do you really think that that could potentially happen in America? We're such a gun-happy, such a gun-friendly nation, or there's a lot of people who are. We, we really love the, the Second Amendment here. And then you look at Britain. I mean, the cops don't even carry um, handguns with them. Do you think that that might have something to do with it, that they're just like, hey, don't step on our toes. We don't even have guns. <laughs> that, that's, you know, sad but true. I think you might have hit the nail on the head. But the problem is we do have a tendency, you know, as I mentioned previously, to kind of follow that example of becoming, I mean, look at New York City. Mayor Bloomberg is quite the ultimate nanny. So I could see him, you know, in New York and Chicago have such restrictive gun laws, it's almost impossible to get a carry permit. So at some point, I think if you're teaching, you know, the kind of self-defense skills necessary to keep yourself alive in a life or death situation, Unfortunately, I can imagine that happening in some, you know, city or state in America. And we will obviously vigorously defend our right to self-defense. Have you ever heard of something like this happening before? I mean, I personally haven't, but Tim, Tim has actually come out and said that he feels like there was a hidden agenda here with the British government because he has been saying time and time again that British citizens should be allowed to defend themselves without fear of prosecution or criminal charges. I mean, do you think that this might have something to do with it? 
Um, yeah, I, I think, like I said, I think the British government wants you to rely on them to protect you in every way, to take care of you cradle to grave, and this is just another example of it. And the idea that you would face criminal charges for simply doing what you need to do to stay alive uh, is sad. I, the, the problem in the United States, it's not that there might be a law against it so much as there would be a civil suit against you if you defend yourself and, God forbid, you weren't able to prove, you know, that this person was trying to kill you. So I, I think it's a danger to even allow this to, to get a toehold anywhere, and uh, I hope I hope somehow they can bring the Brits to their senses. Maybe, uh, maybe another round of rioting, you know, and some civilians getting their skulls cracked will bring them to their senses. It is interesting. I mean, The Guardian had a poll about this, and over 70% of people were just like, this is ridiculous. This is absurd. This never should have happened. I mean, so it really is interesting that the government is really the ones pushing this. The citizens seem to not care and think that it's absurd. Well, the citizens know that when there was all that rioting last year, the cops didn't even show up until it was done. And again, they took exactly. pictures and said, wow, oh, that was a shame. Sure, sorry about your store, buddy. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you so much for your opinion and for coming on. That was Jim Hansen, military blogger for Black5.net.